Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call to order this August 22nd, 2023 meeting of the Pierce County Council. The time is 3.02 p.m. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. Council Member Campbell. Here. Council Member Coover. Here. Council Member Denson. Here. Thank you. Here. Council Member Herrera. Here. Council Member Hitchin. Here. Council Member Morrell. Here. And Council Member Mello. Here. There are seven members present, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We have all members present. Our moment of silence today is dedicated to those affected by the Maui uh, wildfires, where as of this afternoon, 115 lives have been lost and 850 individuals remain unaccounted for. They've also lost countless residential structures and business structures. I'd like to um, invite Council Member um, Herrera to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the land acknowledgement um, followed by a moment of silence dedicated to those who have been affected by wildfires nationally, both in Maui and here in Washington State, where in Spokane, two lives have been lost and at least 265 structures have been destroyed this week in Spokane. Councilmember Herrera. Thank you, Chair. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional homelands of the Coast Salish tribes. Coast Salish people have lived on and stewarded these lands since time immemorial and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one small step through, uh, towards true allyship, and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous people of this land. I'd like to invite everybody to stand and please uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance with me. Aye. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are now at section four of our agenda, approval of the agenda. Are there any objections to approving today's agenda as presented? Seeing no objection, the agenda is approved. On today's council agenda, there will be multiple opportunities for public comment. On the consent agenda, you may provide comment on any final action item. This does not include items uh, placed on the consent agenda for introduction and scheduling. And on today's consent agenda, there are two proposals scheduled for final hearing. During sections eight and nine of the agenda, we will take public comment on each ordinance and resolution individually. And finally, under community forum, there will be an opportunity to address the council on any topic that is not on today's agenda. So we now have the consent agenda before us. Does any member wish to pull any item from the consent agenda? Chair. Sure. Mr. Campbell. I do see that we have uh, one of our appointees with us t today. Um, and remind me what section I need to pull that to. Uh, to section nine. To section nine, okay. Then I would move uh, and I just want to be sure before I do that, the other uh, potential person, Kelly Johnson, is there? Kelly Johnson online or here? Okay. Um, I would move that uh, uh, we move proposal number R2023-124 to section nine and adopt the consent agenda as amended. Is there a second? Sorry. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt the consent agenda with the exception of moving proposal 2023-124 to section nine of our agenda. This is a public hearing. Again, we'll take a public comment on any final action item on our consent agenda. 
Is there any member of the public wishing to provide comment on any final action item? Anyone in chambers? Final action items on the consent agenda? Not seeing any. Mr. Winesbury, anybody in the Zoom room? For any member of the public wishing to provide comment on any final agenda, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or start on your telephone keypad. I see my hand for this time, Chair. Not seeing any, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to council. The vote is on adoption of the consent agenda with the exception of proposal 2023-124, which has been moved to section nine. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes. Council Member Coover. Aye. Council Member Denson. Aye. Council Member Herrera. Aye. Council Member Hinchin. Aye. Council Member Morrell. Aye. Council Member Campbell. Aye. Council Member Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call vote is seven ayes and zero nays. On a vote of seven ayes and zero nays, the consent agenda is adopted. That brings us to section six, messages from the executive judges or the prosecuting attorney. We have a message from the executive transmitting the following ordinance, which was approved and signed on August 10th, 2023. They included two ordinances. The first was ordinance number 2023-23, which was granting a non-exclusive franchise agreement to the Summit Water and Supply Company for water lines in Pierce County. The second was ordinance number 2023-26, which was an ordinance of the Pierce County Council um, affirming an application for open space classification uh, for, um, for a certain piece of property located in uh, the city of Puyallup. Those were the two ordinances that the executive signed. That brings us to section seven, proclamations, recognitions, and awards. The first is a presentation on vision 2050. Um, and I'd like to invite Betty Capistani, Pierce County's Director of Economic Development, and also Josh Brown from the Puget Sound Regional Council to make this presentation. Welcome. All right, excellent. Thank you for having me here today, Chairman Mellon, members of the County Council. Uh, for the record, I'm Josh Brown, Executive Director of the Puget Sound Regional Council. I'm here with great news, a Vision 2050 Award recognition. So a little background on our Vision 2050 Awards. As you are aware, PSRC is the region's long-range regional planning agency. We're so grateful for the strong leadership from members of the County Council, all the hours that you give our agency, the work that your staff gives us in partnership as well. But we established our Vision 2050 awards some time ago to recognize implementation of our regional plans. You know, we're looking out 30 years or along the horizon of the big things that we need to get right, but we recognize that it's our counties, our cities, our transit agencies, ports, tribes, that are the implementers of these regional plans. So each of our categories is a little different. This is a working together category, which really focuses on collaboration. And, and the project or the initiative that, that we're recognizing today is a Pierce County Business Accelerator Program, which I know members of the County Council are very well aware of. This is a partnership between Pierce County Economic Development Department, the Tacoma Pierce County Chamber of Commerce, the Asia Pacific Cultural Center, the Tacoma Pierce County Black Collective, Mi Centro, and the Korean Women's Association along with the City of Lakewood. So I'm not sure if any of those partners are, are here today, but if they are, we absolutely want to recognize you and congratulations to the county government for your amazing efforts. And with that, I'll hand things over to Betty Capistrani to say a few words. Thank you. I'm Betty Capistani, Director of Economic Development uh, for Pierce County, and I just want to thank all of you and Council for your leadership. I think we saw a vision and opportunity of how do we build generational wealth, um, and that's why we started the Pierce County Business Accelerator. You heard a lot of our amazing partners. Um, to date, we've graduated 311 people, 92% um, of which are minority-owned businesses, 68, 69% are women-owned business, and 11% are veteran-owned businesses. And I think we still probably have 200 people that want to be in the program. Uh, so, so thank you very much for that. And they have so far, I want to say 100 and some odd, 90 some odd, have raised almost $4.7 million of capital. Um, and that's what, including what we've matched for them. So it's really an impressive program and we're looking forward to tracking and following them. But thank you very much for uh, your leadership in these efforts. Thank you so much. That is uh, very exciting. It's great to be recognized um, by the region for this work. Director Capistani, you and your team, um, both internally and the team you assembled 
outside of the county, all the partners you brought together to make this business accelerator program a reality uh, was a tremendous amount of work in the toughest of times when we often couldn't get together safely, but you still figured out how to bring teams of people together to bring this online. And you know, this is this, a classic example of, you know, many of us have said, we wanna um, get out of the pandemic better than we went into it. So what does it mean to get out of the pandemic better than we went into it? It means things just like this, right? Making sure that we can invest in um, folks who wanna be entrepreneurs, people who wanna start their own business, build generational wealth, people who didn't have the skills and resources to do that before, uh, before the pandemic started and using these limited resources to do just this. Um, it's just a, a great example of getting out of the pandemic better than we went into it. Hundreds and hundreds of Pierce County families and individuals will have a better, um, a better path forward, a better path to a living wage job and generational wealth because of your hard work. So thank you, Mr. Brown, for recognizing the work. Thank you, Ms. Capisani, and the many, many partners you've assembled to bring it together. Let's give them a round of applause. Oh, thank you. I think your staff wants to take a picture. We would love picture. to take a picture. Perfect. We'll have you come up um, and do a photo up here, Brian. Congratulations. Thank you. There you go. What you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. Nice to see you. All right. One, two, three. Let's get one more. One, two, three. Got it. Thank you. Excellent. Congrats again. Congratulations. Good work. Absolutely. Thank you again, Mr. Brown, for um, making it here and presenting that Vision 2050 award from the Regional Council. As a, we have two proclamations um, to recognize today. We're really pleased to do this um, and pause and recognize this. I wanna note um, that what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, do both photos at, at the same time at the very end of the second proclamation. So. Um, uh, thank you for bearing with us here. The, the first proclamation is proclaiming that August 24th, 2023 as Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County Day. And I'd like to invite Leslie Dalzell, CEO of the Tacoma Pierce County Humane Society, and also Ashley Talby, Chief Philanthropy Officer for the Humane Society. I'd invite you to the podium as Councilmember Campbell reads the proclamation into the record. Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you, Chair. A proclamation of the Pierce County Council proclaiming August 24th, 2023 as the Humane Society for Tacoma Pierce County Day, the Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County Day in Pierce County, Washington. Excuse me. Whereas the Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County was established in 1888 by a group of revolutionaries and animal welfare champions who questioned the status quo to help prevent cruelty towards animals in the community. And whereas the Humane Society for Tacoma and Pierce County has since grown into Washington State's highest serving animal shelter with more than 8,700 dogs, cats, and critters coming through its doors each year with programs for adoption, reunification, outreach, and education. And whereas owning a pet, including adopted animals, have many benefits, including alleviating stress, improving mood, decreasing depression, increasing physical activity, and reducing loneliness, especially for seniors and those who live alone. And whereas the Humane Society for Tacoma Pierce County is a rare open admission shelter, taking in pets no matter their age, breed, medical issue, or behavior problems, and places no limits on pets for space and time, providing each animal a chance at finding happiness. And whereas 
The Humane Society for Tacoma Pierce County provides expert veterinary treatment, including diagnostics, life-saving and quality of life improving surgeries, and preventative care for the pets that enter its shelter. And whereas the Humane Society for Tacoma Pierce County supports Pierce County residents experiencing poverty, short-term financial strain, and lack of access to affordable pet care services by providing spay, neuter, and wellness assistance, free pet food and supplies, behavioral advice and training opportunities, and private rehoming resources. And whereas the Humane Society for Tacoma Pierce County Day is recognized as a day where citizens work together to rally for animal welfare, build a strong, stronger animal-loving community, and support pet owners regardless of income or circumstances, and that this day serves as an opportunity to pause, remember, celebrate, and demonstrate how we can treat all beings with care and respect they deserve. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this, the 22nd day of August 2023, by the Pierce County Council that August 24th, 2023, is designated as the Humane Society for Tacoma Pierce County Day, honoring the shelter's 135 years of service, saving countless lives and keeping pets with their families here in Pierce County. Please join us in a round of applause. <laughs> Leslie, Ashley, 135 years is definitely worth celebrating. Uh, we'd like to turn it over to you for some brief remarks. partnership and the recognition of our hard work and perseverance. This year is a milestone year for us, for our entire organization in so many ways, including our 135 year anniversary of serving the community. Over the course of these 135 years, our animal shelter has stood as a beacon of hope for countless animals who found themselves in need of care, love, and a second chance. This day is not merely a celebration of years past, but a testament to the unwavering dedication, compassion, and resilience that have shaped this organization into what it is today. As we look back on our history, we also look ahead to the future, recognizing the challenges and opportunities that lie before us, such as the pressing need for a new facility to meet the growing needs of our community. While we celebrate the accomplishments of the past, we are working to create a brighter future for animal welfare in Pierce County. Just a couple of months ago, we unveiled our three-year strategic plan, which first and foremost leads off with our revised mission statement. Partnering with our community, we provide life-saving work for pets in need and support to the people who love them. This new statement highlights a key action for our organization, partnership. While Pierce County relies on us to provide expert care for thousands of lost, neglected, and homeless pets each year, we lean on P Pierce County to endorse our work. Thank you for your support and partnership as we pave a new future together. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Are there other remarks, um, any other remarks by council members on this proclamation? Council Member Herrera. Thank you, Chair. Just want to have my say a little humane society uh, story real quick but uh, you know it was several years ago uh, my daughter had a cat and uh, the cat got lost a wild animal got it and uh, you know your daughter's crying and, and, and we got to do something so we went down to the humane society and I really really appreciated the uh, told them their story our story um, we we're down there to get another cat and uh, I really appreciate the professionalism down there and the pairing of animals. We saw several cats got into a room and we paired the, the, the best cat for us. And um, you come to find out the cat that we did pick um, um, was a cat that uh, was owned by someone from JBLM who, uh, in JBLM, a lot of people have uh, sudden deployments where they can't take care of an animal I know. Um, especially back during the uh, global war on terror when the op tempo of those deployments were a lot you probably saw an influx of animals from that and come to find out that was one of the cats uh, that was about seven or eight years ago and that cat has been the best animal we've ever had and I appreciate that and let alone the uh, you've been around for such a long time you know the trends habits and idiosyncrasies of uh, whatever's going on in the community you can handle it I mean in other states we have 
major disasters like in Hawaii or the animals, right? There's a lot of factors that come in. You have the history and knowledge of taking care of animals, and I feel very confident in the future um, that you'll be able to take care of the people, pairing animals, and then the animals that uh, are lost. So, um, thank you, Chair. Thank you for those remarks. Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you much for the work that you do. Uh, the partnership is really important between pets and people. Um, I love and adore, and sometimes I'm frustrated by the pet that I received from the Humane Society, um, <laughs> but he is a reason to make sure I come home from work, and he keeps me company, and during the pandemic was really important. And I, I adopted him specifically, went to the Humane Society, and I said, I want a project. You found me one. And, um, and I'm good with large dogs. And you were like, yes, let's go. Um, so I'd lost my husband. I needed somebody to care about me and want to see me when I get home. And you, you found me the, the perfect pet. He's not perfect all the time, but he's the perfect pet. So thank you for the work you do and, and helping to make those connections in our community. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for those reflections, Councilmember Hitchin. Councilmember Kruver. Thank you, Chair Mello. I just want to add to the appreciation for what you all do. I have never made a trip down to the Humane Society because I don't think I could handle it. There is so much going on and it, was, it would be too heavy for my heart. So I end up adopting pets that get, or sorry, I have two cats that were my boys brought home. And I have my, my, my kitties to, in support of them. And so just again, thank you for all that you do and, and let me know. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I'll just say, uh, close by joining my colleagues um, in the, gra the gratitude for your staff and the many, many volunteers that you helped coordinate to do this really important work over 135 years. That is a long time to stay at it. So the proclamation, I just think, was written so perfectly. Um, there's so many reasons why um, animals bring joy and, and reason to uh, many of our lives. And so thank you for what you do. Thank you for allowing us to be a very compassionate community um, because of the work of you and the many volunteers. Um, we're grateful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. And we will invite you um, up here to take a photo after this next proclamation. So this uh, second proclamation today is proclaiming August 31st, 2023 as Overdose Awareness Day in Pierce County. And I'd like to invite Chelsea Amato, Opioid Task Force Co Coordinator from the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department to the podium. Welcome, Chelsea. And if you brought friends, feel free to bring them as well. And I'd like to call on Councilmember Kitchen to read the proclamation into the record. Councilmember Kitchen. Thank you, Chair. A proclamation of the Pierce County Council proclaiming August 31, 2023 as Overdose Awareness Day in Pierce County, Washington. Whereas the effects of substance, opioid, and stimulant misuse pose a public health challenge that impacts every community, and August 31st, 2023 is recognized, as international, is recognized internationally as Overdose Awareness Day to help reduce the stigma of drug-related deaths and to remember the people who have died because of substance poisoning. And whereas in 2017, the Pierce County Council declared that Pierce County was in an opioid crisis, and today our community continues to see opioid misuse and overdoses, with opioid-related overdose being the most common cause of accidental death in Pierce County. And whereas fentanyl, a strong and fast-acting synthetic opioid, is the main reason for the rapid increase in overdoses, and it is now the main form of opioid sold on the street, online, and being mixed with drugs like heroin, methamphetamine, and fake prescription opioid pills. And whereas the tremendous work and efforts of our local partners, such as neighboring jurisdictions, first responders, social service providers, medical treatment professionals, and community advocates are essential in our efforts to save lives by preventing and treating overdoses and supporting people with substance use disorder. And whereas Pierce County's crisis recovery centers provide law enforcement EMTs and families a place other than our emergency room and jail to bring people who are experiencing behavioral health challenges to receive immediate and appropriate care. And whereas the Pierce County's Opioid Task Force continues to meet and work with the community to engage with service providers, health professionals, and those impacted by substance use disorder and those that use drugs to educate and remove stigma with a goal of reducing harm, preventing overdose, and death. 
And whereas Pierce County remains resolute in its commitment to implement effective evidence-based solutions to combat this crisis, greatly improving the lives of people with substance use disorder, their families and loved ones, and all community members who have been impacted. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed on this 22nd day of August 2023 by the Pierce County Council that August 31, 2023 is Overdose Awareness Day in Pierce County, Washington, and residents are encouraged to further educate themselves on the signs of an overdose, the best response practices, local services, and treatment options, or they, rec or they can refer people to su with substance use disorder to additional services by visiting the TP. CHD, so the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department dot org and wa dot two one one dot org or call two one one. Thank you, Chair. Please join me in recognizing this hard work. <laughs> Chelsea, thank you for being with us. The podium's yours. Thank you, Chair Mello, Councilmember Hitchin, and the Pierce County Council for recognizing International Overdose Awareness Day on August thirty first, twenty twenty three. Um, as uh, Council Member Hitchin mentioned, opioid-related overdose is the most common cause of accidental death in Pierce County, outnumbering motor vehicle collisions and firearm deaths. Deaths and emergency visits from overdoses involving stimulants like methamphetamine, methamphetamine and cocaine are also on the rise, as she mentioned. Neighboring counties are starting to see overdoses related to tranquilizers like xylazine as well. For January through June of 2023, preliminary data suggests that 125 deaths were due to drugs of any category. Approximately 90 deaths involved opioids, and of these, a vast majority were prescription synthetic opioids. I just want to say that these, no these deaths are not just numbers. Um, they represent our loved ones, including family members, friends, neighbors, and community members. Um, personally, I lost one of my beloved friends and colleagues, Houston Brotherton Tobin, um, who loved books, loved to read, uh, to overdose on Valentine's Day in 2020. Um, I recognize this day in honor of him every year and the countless other vibrant lives who we've lost to overdose. Aphrodite Souser, my colleague from Elevate Health and um, the o uh, Opioid Task Force Steering Committee, and I accept this proclamation on behalf of the Tacoma Pierce County Opioid Task Force. Since 2018, the task force, which is a joint effort between Pierce County, City of Tacoma, Elevate Health, and Tacoma Pierce County Health Department, is a regional response to the opioid crisis. We promote positive behavioral health and well being and work to reduce stigma related to substance use. Our committees focus on prevention, education, access to treatment and transportation. Um, medication for opioid use disorder integration and anti-stigma. Uh, for more information about the task force, um, you can contact me, you can uh, do as Council Member Hitchin said, and go to the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department website as well. And she graciously put some flyers out. We have many, um, they're purple and they're on the table here, and we have many events planned for our overdose awareness campaign this year, starting with this one. Thank you for your leadership and your very hard work. And we have a partner here from Elevate Health. Would you like to share any thoughts? I think she covered it. I really appreciate the work that the Opioid Task Force has done and to be part of that. Um, I also have lost loved ones to overdose and I appreciate being part of this work. Thank you. And would you mind uh, introducing yourself for the record? I'm Aphrodite Souser from Elevate Health. Thank you, Aphrodite. Thank you for your investment in this really important work. Are there remarks by council members about this proclamation? We'll begin with council member Herrera. <clears throat> thank you, chair, and uh, thank you for bringing this awareness. Um, this, this is important work that you, that you do, and, and this awareness is very important. Um, it doesn't uh, just affect, when people think about overdoses, they just think of drug addicts that they see on the street. Uh, but it includes all kinds of different people, and there's a human factor behind it. There's their construction workers, their veterans, um, their mothers, their fathers, um, and whatever circumstances that led them to, to that. Even elderly who might have taken um, the, the wrong stuff, you know, that, that all uh, comes into it. So the awareness isn't just for the drug addicts, but um, before I was a council member, everyone knows I was a po police officer, and I've been to 
probably literally hundreds of overdose um, incidences and um, and from how we handled it from a long time ago to now has changed a lot with uh, um, with uh, some of the technologies we have with uh, Narcan and, and some of the other things uh, but I've actually personally seen on a human level um, some folks who had that scare of an overdose and were brought back and got a second chance um, and turned their life around. I've also seen folks that maybe it didn't work out for them and they passed away, but years later saw the human element of their kids growing up without their parent. Um, those are still things that are long lasting things uh, that, that affect this community and it is a scourge that's happening, not just in Pierce County, but all over Washington State and the United States. So having this awareness and knowing the signs and symptoms to help people get a second chance um, is important because it's not just for today, it's long lasting, it, it affects families and probably most of the folks that are in here. Um, so appreciate for this awareness um, and it's important work that you do. So thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Councilman. Thank, thank you, Councilman Herrera. Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you both for being here and your continued work. And I know this is just the first of many different events you have going on in the next two weeks. Um, I want to acknowledge one event that I'm really ex excited about having um, here in council chambers um, and available online through PCTB. On Tuesday, um, we will have the health department, probably Chelsea and team, will be here and providing um, an actual training on how to administer naloxone, Narcan, um, and have it uh, so that you know what to do and what to look for. Um, because like Council Member Herrera said, it, it can happen and you're not aware of what's going on. You don't understand that this pill is laced with something that you didn't think about. And um, as weird as it sounds, the world of recreational drugs, which was a thing in the 70s-ish, 70s-ish, mm. earlier, 60s, okay, some point before I was born, um, you know, <laughs> recreational drugs, like, it's really, it's scary. And people think they're taking one thing and then they get um, laced with something they are not ready for. And fentanyl is one of those drugs that really is, is hitting our community hard. Um, and it's taking lives um, truly by accident. And so knowing what to do in that case beyond 911, obviously that's your first line of defense, but there's something you can do that's much faster if you have access to this. So um, there are also three locations in our county that you can access through a vending machine um, at First United Methodist Church in Tacoma, the Moore Tacoma Public Library and the Recovery Cafe in Ording all have a vending machine that is um, stocked with Narcan um, and you can learn more about them um, through the Tacoma Needle Exchange. So uh, the acknowledgement that there are act actions you can take as an individual to reverse an overdose, um, learn what those are. If you have teens or you have seniors or adults in your family, anyone, not your pets, I don't know that Narcan works on your pets, Chelsea. Narcan works on your pets. Never mind. Maybe you, even your pets. Um, have it around. Have it available. And um, be at the ready because you just don't know whose life you can possibly save. So thank you for being here and your work and looking forward to trying to get to a couple of these events. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, in closing, uh, you know, this is really serious work. Th thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, to raise awareness and to bring resources to our community. Um, we, we know every zip code, right? Every single zip code, every neighborhood, every family is actually affected by this. If, um, it, it, it just is, and it's really hard in, um, on, on this community. So uh, thank you for bringing the, the awareness and the skills and the resources to combat this, this crisis. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate the work that you're, that you're gonna do. Um, with that, I'm gonna invite you up first, uh, you both up first for a photo uh, with our proclamation so we can commemorate the moment, and then we'll invite up our friends from the Humane Society. Come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
three. Let's get one more. All right. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Can we invite the Humane Society team up? Yeah, some folks might have to go down here because it's just not wide enough. Right, to okay, everybody. I'll be happy to go down there. If you want to self-organize. <laughs> Welcome. Yes. Yeah, no. For you, you bring it on my get it? All right, yeah, you guys look good. One, two, three. Get a little bit wider. One, two, three. And one more. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Love the story. Thank you again, everyone, for being with us. We're going to, um, for members' information, we're going to take up uh, a motion here under ordinances, and then we're going to move to a, an appointment if there's no objection after that, and then move through the rest of our agenda. So um, we have uh, a motion before us uh, related to proposal number 2023-24. Councilmember Denson for a motion. I'll be fair. I move to override the executive's veto of ordinance 2023-24. It's been properly moved and seconded that we override the veto um, of the executive of proposal number 2023-24. Ms. Long to uh, introduce this procedural item. Thank you. So the Pierce County Charter um, provides that when an ordinance is passed by the council and vetoed by the executive, uh, the council may override the veto within 30 days of the ordinance and a veto message being returned uh, to the council. A veto override requires the affirmative vote of two thirds of the council or five votes uh, and the ordinance cannot be amended. It's simply an up or down vote. Thank you, Ms. Long. Um, we also have Mr. Kruger available, um, who's a subject matter expert on the related uh, land use matters. But thank you, Ms. Long, for briefing on the procedural item. The procedural item in front of us um, is uh, to override the executive's veto of this proposal that was approved um, on July 25th, 2023, uh, by a vote of the council. Are there remarks by council members before we open this up for a public hearing? I'm not seeing any. Um, so we will open this up for a public hearing. Uh, the public hearing is on the vote in front of the council to override the veto. I'm gonna ask members of the public who are participating in the public comment to stay focused on the vote in front of the council. Um, you have three minutes to make your comments. Um, you don't have to use all three minutes. We ask you to come to the podium, introduce yourself, um, state your name for the record, and keep your comments limited to up to three minutes. We'll start with those in chambers. Um, and I, I'm not seeing folks who have said that they're willing to testify. Um, we have folks who have signed up from um, related to the various proclamations. I'm not seeing anyone in chambers uh, in these sign-up sheets that I have in front of me. Uh, wanting to testify on this. Uh, so let me open it up. Is there anyone? 
Let's come to the podium. Set your name for the record. You have up to three minutes to make your report. In any event, uh, if there ever was a veto that needed to be overridden, it is this one. It's, uh, I feel the veto is contrary to the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in chambers? Please come to the podium, state your name for the record, and you have up to three minutes to make your remarks. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Mello, members of the uh, Council. Uh, I uh, am here on behalf of Spanaway Concerned Citizens, and I believe uh, and support the override. I think there's a system of checks and balances, and I thought this body uh, did a, uh, made a step in the right direction when they passed uh, the original Ordinance 2023-24, and I think it's a step in the wrong direction to veto it. Uh, it would serve the uh, community's interests to be co for consistency with the community plans, particularly on density issues that this uh, veto be supported and that the ordinance eventually be repealed per 2023-24. Thank you. Thank you very much. Name for the record. Sir, I'm sorry, could you repeat your name for the record? My name is George Wern, and it's, I'm on, here on behalf of Spanaway Concerned Citizens. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you for coming all this way to be with us. Ms. Lincoln? <laughs> invite you to the podium and ask you to introduce your own self and you have to, up to three minutes to make your remarks. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Lincoln. I'm president of the Spanaway Community Association, and I'm hobbling a little because of my new knee. I know that's not related, but it explains something. Um, I thank you for this because I believe that the RR zone doesn't need to have high density. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't do everything I want it to do because I'm not particularly fond of the uh, item that's seems to be grandfathered in in the middle of all of this, but uh, maybe we'll deal with that in another way. But uh, appreciate it, uh, at least the chance to um, repeal and override the veto of it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in chambers? I'm not seeing any other members in the public um, wishing to provide comment in chambers. Mr. Weinsbury, anybody in the Zoom room wishing to provide comment on this? Party member of the public wish to provide comment on proposal number 2023-24, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or the star nine on your telephone keypad. Uh, looks like we have four hands raised and the first one is gonna be number ending in 624. Um, one moment. They have permission to talk, they just haven't talked yet, sir. Looks like they're not unmuted. There they go. There we go. Color 624, you oh, said. Go there ahead. I go. Oh. Thank you. This is Roxy Giddings. I'm on a cell phone. That's why you didn't recognize my number. Um, yes, I think we, we should override this. Um, please do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're calling in from a different number than normal. You fooled us. <laughs> Next uh, is name Indian Larson. Hello, my name is Ed Larson. I am on the board of Friends of Spanaway Lake and this proposal never should even be in front of you. This should ever should have been passed in the first place. You need to override the speedo. Um, I know it won't help with the current situation with the village, but um, Resource zones are, are not places to build high density housing. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Next person is a uh, last name Heard. I'm Terry Heard from the Fredrickson area. <laughs> Been here before. When it comes to the densification issue, I am very much against the densification without the infrastructure to support it. Please consider the fact that this needs to be readdressed. Thank you. Thank you. No. And then we have one more hand, Chair. Uh, last name ending in the Schick. Hello, this is Angela Schick. Um, I want to thank the council for 
moving um, this or proposing to override the veto. Uh, it was a unanimously passed uh, repeal and I hope to see you all vote in favor of the override. Um, it will wrongly place possibly more villages in the Spanaway area and there is not enough res resources or infrastructure to help facilitate these people to um, rehabilitation and changing the chronically homeless lifestyle. Um, I appreciate your guys's um, opportunity to override the veto and please vote in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, we actually have two more hands that went up. One hand was Lynn B, but the hand went down. So Lynn B, if you wanted to talk, you may go. And then we have another hand after that. This is Lynn Borcherding, and I'm calling uh, to request that the, the veto be overridden. It was voted unanimously on July 25th, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be overridden unanimously this time also. So I look forward to the council doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. And we actually have Sue is next. Hi, my name is Sue Thompson, and I am also hoping that the council will override the veto. Uh, I also, as others have said, do not think this is the appropriate place. Um, Sue, you muted yourself. I'm not sure if that was an accident and if you're concluded with your remarks, but if you have more to say, please unmute yourself. Let's move on to the next person. Okay. And next we have um, Colston Realty, uh, Realty uh, Julie. Hi. Um, hi, this is Julie Collison, and I just wanted to say thank you for listening to your constituents, and um, I would like you to also override the veto. Um, I'd like that cross space highway to go through there someday, and um, also that Spanaway Marsh is very critical wetlands and should not be built on like that. So thank you very much. Please override this veto. This is pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. And there are no more uh, hands raised, Chair. We'll give it one last moment to make sure there's no other hands in the Zoom room. I'm not seeing any, we'll, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the council. Are there final remarks by council members? <laughs> council member Denson. Yes, thank you, Chair. I apologize for not being there today. I just did not, did not imagine I would still be talking about this. <laughs> I just wanted to make a couple comments that you know, it's just really unfortunate that the things have come to this. As we all know, there's litigation involved with this issue. And a couple weeks ago, Council made a policy decision that we thought was best for Pierce County, our taxpayers, the environment, and the integrity of our land use policies. So I respectfully ask my fellow council members to vote with me to override this veto today. And thank you for your thoughtful consideration of this issue. Thank you, Councilmember Denson. Are there any other final remarks by council members? Councilmember Morell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Appreciate the opportunity to discuss this. this. Vetoes don't happen very often. And I think since I've been here uh, on this council, I think I only remember two. So when they are given, um, there is a lot of thought put into a veto. It just doesn't 
happen because they don't like the policy that this council uh, put, put forth. This particular issue has been battered around quite a long time. Uh, we started out with 2022-49S, which was basically looking at all the land uses within Pierce County and putting shared housing into those codes. We did leave one out, and that was the residential uh, resource lands. So we came back with 2023-5S, and we included shared housing uh, within that ordinance. Everything was moving forward, and then uh, we decided to move the date, the effective date, and we decided to then run ordinance 2023-14, which was unanimously supported, moving the date to de effective date to December 1st. I thought everything was fine. We had agreement on this council what we were doing. And then out of the blue comes three weeks later, 2023-24, which was a repeal of everything that we have done to this point. And at that point, I'm just going, I, I thought we dealt with that. Thought it was done, over, but people, uh, individuals on this council have the ability to do whatever they want to do as long as they have the four votes to support it. I ended up amending it at the last minute uh, because I was, to be honest with you, frustrated that we were back here again dealing with this issue. So I amended it, negotiated a date uh, that the uh, appeal would, would happen, extended it out to December 15th, had Mr. Kruger put an equity note into it. The equity note came back. It would neg negatively affect low income and people of color if we appealed, uh, repealed this ordinance. Okay, we've got that. The executive, I think with a good conscience and logic decided that we'd overextended ourselves. He agreed on ordinance 2023-14, great, we were all on the same page, and like I say, 24 comes along out of the blue, and we find ourselves in a repeal. This council's put a lot of work into looking at our land uses, because we have to. We have a crisis right now with housing and especially affordable housing. We found a model in Austin, Texas that developed a very unique chronic homeless community. Not sheds on a parking lot, but actually a community. District one has the only sanctioned tiny home village in all of unincorporated Pierce County and that is the already Veterans Village. When the council was moving to place that village, do you think the community embraced it? Do you think they said, yeah, bring it here? No, they were up in arms, putting that across the street from us, criminals, low lives. But we did it anyway. They stood their ground, they did it anyway. Here we are three years later, every one of those neighbors say, we were wrong. The community has been great for this area. And we've gotten to know some of these 
previously homeless individuals. We accept them. Our fears were totally unfounded. But yet, here we are arguing about some of the same issues again. I notice in looking at the state legislature, in the last few years, they have taken zoning and started applying statewide applications to us because of our inability to push housing out. House Bill 1220, which was passed this last legislation, was because cities were making zoning decisions for homeless shelters impossible to place in their cities because of the restrictions. House Bill 1220 basically then said we will then override all the cities and we will start making laws. So they included in this homeless in any zone where hotels are allowed and housing in any residential zone. Homeless shelters can be placed now in cities. It is because we constantly are moving the ball when it comes to zoning. And we need to, you know, we just honored, you know, with the Puget Sound Regional Council uh, gave an award out. They have said we are 10,000 housing units behind in what we need to build in this area. Majority of those are affordable, need to be affordable housing. And we continue to say, no, no, we want to direct uh, how we place these. I understand that recreation or uh, residential resource lands are sensitive areas. But this council did agree on ARL land, which is farmland, to allow shared housing for agricultural workers. And here we are again saying, no, no, we're gonna take thousands of acres within unincorporated Pierce County and make them off limits. But yet, hey, if you wanna build a mansion on residential resource property, you can do that. You can build a single family home on it, but I can guarantee you any of those folks walking around that don't have a place to live, they'll never be able to live on that property because they can't afford it. So we have this great concept of putting together a village. We have worked this for two, three years to come up with the community Pierce County Community First Village. Most, several of the council members have now toured that facility down in Austin, Texas. 98% of all the funds that operate that village are private donations. We need to kickstart the one here that we have in Pierce County. So we, as a council, agreed to set aside monies, $22 million, I think, for it, to get it going. And here we are now, Tacoma Rescue Mission has purchased the property. They're in ownership with it. And we now want to change the rules and put an appeal on them, which basically means the land is non-conforming to them. They're already vested. They're gonna go through the process, but this council continues to kick the legs out from underneath the chair that they're sitting in. They have a huge uphill battle to just to get the funding for this. And we're taking tools out of their toolbox that they need to move forward. If this gets killed, at the growth management hearing board because we're not in compliance, fine. 
let the growth management board rule. If the hearing examiner rules, nope, I'm not going to approve this or I'm going to approve it with such tight conditions that they can't make it work, fine. But for this council to possibly have the finger pointed at us to say, you helped dismantle our program. All I'm saying is give it a chance. Their program, their, their application is already vested. They're going to move forward. Let other agencies take it from here. We have done our job. We have made lemonade out of lemons. And I'm uh, not thrilled that we're here. Uh, I didn't like this to begin with. But there again, this is what we have to deal with. And I think the village, if it moves forward, is built, as they said in House Bill 2020, or 1220, it will increase access to permanent supportive housing, will likely result in better health outcomes, less trash and littering in our public lands. Because there again, as the Ording Veterans Village has proved, you can take chronic homeless like Jimmy, who lived on the streets of Pierce County for 29 years, and now he has a forever home at the Veterans Village. To listen to him tell you his story, most of you would just be, how in the world are you still alive? But he is, and he chose the Veterans Village because it was a community. It wasn't just a shed in a parking lot. So I just want to put a face to what we're attempting to do here. And I know that that project is intimately tied to this and to this piece of property. But I, I think there again, uh, Jimmy, who has no voice, 35, 36 other folks that live with Jimmy, they're not here testifying because they don't, can't, but they are grateful for the home that Pierce County has provided for them. And we need to move forward. I am asking that we not repeal the executive's veto that we allow process to take place, and that way the council with a clean conscience can say we did everything we could to make this project a success. And with that, I uh, respectfully ask for a no vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Morrell. Councilmember Kruver. Thank you, Chair Mello. And Thank you for your wonderful words, Council Member Morrell. Yeah. There's a lot of meaning there and a lot of truth. And uh, it's a, what he has said has gone through my mind with all of the many issues that surround this. And uh, this has been a very interesting, if not intense journey for today's purpose for me, begins really with the, G, the GMA, the Growth Management Act, which is something I've never agreed with. It has severely limited our options to deliver a model neighborhood that serves to mend broken souls, securing happiness through industry, economy, and virtue. That's what the mission and the vision of this village is, and it's what the council sought on behest of the public using the tax dollars through the various plans and acts and policies. You know, the weeks and the months and for some years invested by those designing this village concept have not been without a cost, financially and emotionally. You know, the citizens of this county, they want services that will help the unstable or those are the ones who are in a season of life that without intervention could be in their last season of life. This village is an enormous task. 
And I believe that only those who truly believe that this specific mission would be able to preserve the gauntlet of setbacks that it has faced, that it has challenged and that it has faced. You know, and for that, I want to give praise and honor to the Tacoma Rescue Mission. They took a concept. They designed it for those who are ready to work versus those who aren't and made it better than the original plan in Austin. Although I have always been guarded regarding the project, more so the concept of building homes for homeless, I sponsored the, or the re resolution that released the funds for the project because one, it's in my district, and two, the director of the Tacoma Rescue Mission painted such an encouraging vision of what could be, and that vision again, went beyond the success of the Austin Village. And it seems now that that vision needed more time to break through the stigma of the blue tarps, the broken down vehicles, the shopping carts, with garbage and the drug deals going down in public. But you know, the, the failed policies, the defund the police policies, have reduced our men in blue on the streets and their ability, ability to pursue the lawless. And that did not help build the needed confidence in the constituents of that community when they may need protection. And the failed policies from legalizing drug possession have served to perpetuate the self-destructive behavior and increase the smuggling of drugs and humans across open borders, further stressing our public safety services and again undermining the confidence in the county's ability to respond to emergencies. So ultimately, I voted against the resolution that I sponsored for various reasons, and it's unfortunate that the Tacoma Rescue Mission vision didn't quite hit the mark for some, and that the search for a location was limited by the growth management governance model. You know, the property chosen through a process of elimination was a result of what's left after applying needed features, zoning, and land use codes, in which speaking of, you know, having to make an addition in a zone to allow the shared housing did not sit well with my constituents. Just, and with that, you know, the political thermometer that is in this country is really, you know, rising from the man-made heat wave. And every rural residential resource zone should have an equal opportunity. And I believe that some people might call that equity or maybe that's inclus inclusive, but that should have been in all four of the zones. And that opens another door of concern that I have is that with taxpayer dollars funding this village, can we expect a revolving door of lawsuits by individuals who are going to claim that the process wasn't equitable or whatever the case may be? And the environmental aspect is at the heart of this repeal, but not necessarily my heart. I've listened to both sides, and I have my own conclusions, but who am I to dismiss the experts that live in my district? You know, we don't have a crystal ball, and should further, or Spanaway Lake further degrade because of the development, how can I be confident that the county would or financially could provide a remedy? And unquestionably, we have a housing shortage, and that's not a new revelation. As long as we are under the influence of sustainable development goals, the focus is going to be build more houses as shelters and group homes, not homes for families, which is the American dream, which also was pointed out in a recent article that I found from the advocates at uh, the Austin Village is that family is really needed for the folks who live here. So the American dream. We, we are not going to be able to subsidize our way out of the shortage and out of the lawlessness that we are experiencing, which kind of brings me to a, a book I read several years ago. It's called The Forgotten Man. It was Amity Schlale's book that I had read, and, and it's a story that has influenced my uh, thoughts on government. And I found an essay written by William Graham Sumner about it. I, suggests that people look him up, and he talks about how someone has the impression on their mind, and that when there are facts and interests that are directed 
to, to the group, other facts and interests of the group are left out. So consider it's like here the U.S. funding the Ukraine greater dollars than Russia spends on its own military in a year while America is being pummeled with property crimes and where's the help for Hawaii? Is that a forgotten disaster? So when the social reformer, let's say Mr. A and Mr. B, are discussing what person C shall do for the person D without discussing the solution with C, who is forgotten man, he is the financial provider for the reformers, and he becomes the carrier of the burden. And I'm not seeing decreases in unsheltered statistics across the country, including our county, despite the investments of billions of dollars. I see wealth being drained from the forgotten man, who's forced to share in the passion of the heart of A and B, who want to help. And I have a friend who volunteers in Federal Way for an organization that operates with similar goals. He and his wife have found immense joy in assisting this organization, which has been successful in its efforts to find homes for the homeless. Another friend invited me to a fundraiser to, vet, to benefit those who are ready to surrender to the, from the lifestyle on the streets. And they, too, have had great success stories. And I learned of an organization in California that no longer takes government dollars due to the restrictions, and they, too, are thriving. They are organization, there are organizations across the state. I, I wish I could visit them all. But the thing is, the Tacoma Rescue Mission has a proven track record. They're worthy of our support to carry on with this project. But the concept, building a forever home for a special segment of our society, population, may fulfill the passion of the hearts for many and solve problems for some. But it represents a temporary solution requiring permanent funding, for which there is fierce competition. Austin is now in their fourth phase, so the clientele continues to grow. And last I knew, they were going to receive government funding for their um, last project. I don't know how that will work out, but the model, I have to agree, has been fabulous. You know, earlier today, I was listening to Victor Davis Hansen describing California's homeless population. And may we never get to that point. So I, I have to ask, where are the reductions in regulations? Why is the answer always subsidized more rather than get her current housing projects out of the pipeline, reducing costs? Why do the projects continue to take longer? Why is, the more exp ex why is it that the more expensive the house gets, there, there, there is no increased tangible value? You know, I spoke with one of the representatives early today, and he's been working very hard on housing solutions at the state level. And I, you know, trying to navigate all of the regulations, it's like saying, hey, we want you to set a record for the 100-yard dash, but you're going to wear a 100-pound weight jacket, weight vest. So the majority of the state is responsible, but the failed policies that have stifled the growth that creates jobs and wealth need to be addressed. That is not disputed. There is need to do something. But the foundation for this program must be laid with policies that hold the lawless accountable for their actions. There's some 25,000 plus people who were counted as homeless in Washington in January of 22, with just over half estimated as being unsheltered. That percentage, 50.2%, ranked Washington as ninth highest in percentage of homeless among the 50 states. We're not going to build our way out of the homelessness or unsheltered pro humans. It's not a party problem. It's a national problem. We are here to promote the goal. Are we here to promote the goals of government or governance, which would be the proper word, or are we here to promote the goals of the governed? My district wants a bright future, and when they are lifted up, others are lifted too. And I'm confident that regardless of today's vote, great things will result from the outcome. You know, we are a very philanthropic county, and this project has extreme merit. But I am not without the, uh, knowing my district. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Coover. Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you, Chair. I'll uh, try to be brief. Uh, Councilmember uh, Morrell was correct that I think there's only one tiny home village in unincorporated Pierce County. However, I have four or five in my district uh, because the cities have stepped up. Um, and some of them work really well. Some have a few more challenges. 
Uh, so I'd invite you to come down and visit any of them because there are many great stories within them also. And one hotel that we've converted into homeless housing, again, in, in my district. One thing that when I look at 2023-5S is that this doesn't engage the RR zone countywide. We talk about the opportunity to develop thousands of acres. It's only one small area uh, in a mostly council district five, some of six and some of three uh, that is uh, within the R zone that we're discussing. And so uh, we, if I think we're gonna look at it, I think as part of our comp plan, we need to come back and take a countywide look at how we're doing things. Um, but I'll just, I'll, again, I promise to be brief, so I'll just jump to the end here. July 25th, unfortunately, due to a family emergency, I was not able to be here. I thank you, my, my colleagues, for having the debate when 2023 24 came up as it first was promoted. Um, I don't think I would have been uh, supportive of how it was, and I appreciate the amendments in the debate. Um, like my colleagues who voted unanimously, I would have been unanimously uh, in favor of supporting it as amended. Um, it's back before me here today for the first time for me to actually vote on that uh, in a way since I wasn't there, and so I will be voting to support the unanimous decision by this council. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. Any other final remarks by council members? Not seeing any. Um, I will uh, close debate by um, thanking the council for a very respectful conversation about this. I know this council is incredibly serious about um, our affordable housing crisis and our homelessness crisis. And we've taken significant action uh, to continue on, on our path to address that. Um, we did um, uh, update our residential use code, as Councilmember Morell indicated, uh, with a bill at the end of last year that updated our residential use code to make um, more housing types uh, available in more zones. We did not change the residential resource zone, however, in that bill late last year to add more housing types to the residential resource zone. We did not get a bill from um, the executive or, um, or the planning commission that included the residential resource zone in that bill last year to add housing types. Why? Because the residential resource zone is a very um, sensitive zone with, with critical areas. They are wetlands, they're steep slopes, they're headwaters of creeks and lakes. There's good reason why the bill last year did not um, come forward with this housing, this kind of dense housing type in the residential resource zone. We, we, we did um, offer in very appropriate zones more housing types, things like cottage housing that Councilmember Morell has been working on, um, farm worker housing, but not with the commercial uses and the kinds of densities that we've seen with um, this particular bill. We worked on employee housing um, in places like Greenwater up at the our only ski resort where there needs to be employee housing close to that. So yes, it's true that we added more housing types um, in a bill late last year, but we did it very carefully in um, very appropriate zones that can accommodate targeted uses. Uh, we can't have all things in all land use zones. There is a reason why certain properties throughout the county have been designated as residential resource zones. Um, again, they're critical areas, they're wetlands, they're steep slopes, they're, um, they're headwaters to creeks and lakes. Um, I'm very, very comfortable um, putting shared housing and many different housing types and infill development in appropriate zones. I'll continue to vote that way um, uh, v very proudly. Uh, but we have to be careful about what land use types we put in which zones and we have to balance this need for more housing in appropriate areas um, and a diverse group of housing types, we have to balance that um, with the need to protect our water resources, to protect our critical areas, to protect our farmlands and our forest lands and other natural resources. So for me, this is about a, a, a future focus to saying, hey, I'm not sure we got it right before. We need to be more thoughtful about where we put 
more uses and not just put everything everywhere. So, um, uh, we, but at, at the same time, we can continue to provide more housing types. We can and will continue to do more work to do infill development, um, to, to bring more uh, affordable housing, permanently affordable housing online. Uh, we have big plans for that and I'm really excited for the future to, big, to bring those uh, big visions to reality. Um, and, uh, and I'm confident that we're, we're gonna make a lot of headway. Um, but I, I'm gonna continue to support the work we did at the end of last month to say, I don't think we got this right and, um, um, and that we're going to respectfully override this veto. And we did so in a unanimous fashion on July 25th. Um, and I think this council needs to do so again so that we can be um, more thoughtful in the future with our, with our future land use actions. With that, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on the motion to override the executive's veto on proposal 2023-24? Yes. Council Member Denson? Yes. I understand you, ma'am. Yes. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Council Member Herrera? Nay. Council Member Hitchin? Aye. Council Member Morrell? Nay. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Coover? Aye. Council Member Mello? Aye. The result of the roll call vote is five ayes and two nays. On a vote of five ayes and two nays, the motion uh, does prevail and the veto is overridden. We're gonna come back uh, with no objection by council. We have an appointee that's been waiting for some time, um, uh, Mayor Kathy Hayden. Um, and so we have proposal number R2023-124 before us. I'm gonna ask council member Kruver for a motion. It's R2023-124. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to move R2023-124. Yeah. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt proposal R2023-124. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title to the record? <clears throat> proposal number R2023-124, a resolution of the Pierce County Council confirming the reappointment of one existing member, Kathy Hayden, to the Pierce County Launching Tax and Advisory Committee. Thank you. Um, as the title uh, indicates, this is a resolution um, brought forward by the county executive to confirm reappointment of uh, Kathy Hayden, Mayor Kathy Hayden of the great city of Sumner to the Pierce County Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. Mayor Hayden, we would uh, welcome you to introduce yourself briefly. Many of us know you, but um, you can introduce yourself to folks who may not know you and a few brief words about why you want to continue serving on the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. Thank you. I am Mayor Kathy Hayden, City of Sumner. I um, have been on the committee for quite a while. Um, I'm really enjoying my placement on the uh, Lodging Tax um, Commission, and I, I look forward to uh, seeing what, what we can do and, and continue to um, make a difference. So I'm ready to serve. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments before we open this up for a public hearing? Not seeing any. This is a public hearing on the reappointment of Mayor Hayden to the Lodging Tax Advisory Committee. Any members of the public and chambers wishing to provide comment on this reappointment confirmation? I'm not seeing any. Mr. Weinsbury, anybody in the Zoom room? Party members of the public wishing to provide comment on the appointment, press the rest, raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And I see no hands at this time, Chair. Not seeing any hands. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Are there any final remarks by council members? Council Member Kruver. Thank you, Mayor Hayden. I want to let you know how much I appreciate you signing up again. It's always a pleasure to work with you. You've got great ideas and you bring such an asset to the committee. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. We have a meeting coming up, so thank yes. you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member Kruver. Not seeing any other further hands. Uh, Mayor Hayden, thank you again. Um, I love that we have uh, members uh, throughout the county that serve on this. We don't have just lodging facilities in Tacoma, in the, in, right in the city center of, of the county. We, we have great lodging facilities 
throughout the county for people to benefit from uh, tourism and economic development. So thank you for your willingness to serve in this way. Madam thank Clerk, you very much. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on resolution 2023-124. Councilmember Herrera. Aye. Councilmember Hitchin. Aye. Councilmember <clears throat> Morrell. Pass. Councilmember Campbell. Aye. Councilmember Kruver. Aye. Councilmember Denson. Aye. Councilmember Mello. Aye. And Councilmember Morrell. Okay, aye. Thank you. The result of the all come vote is seven ayes and zero nays. Uh, we have to reconsider this passing thing in our rules. Uh, with he seven didn't eyes scare me. <laughs> he didn't scare me at all. <laughs> On a vote of seven eyes and zero nays, the resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mayor Hayden, again for your continued service. Thank you. We're coming back to our regular agenda. We have proposal number 2023-21 before us. And I'm going to ask Vice Chair Campbell for a motion here, please. Thank you, Chair. I would like to make a motion to postpone item number 2023-21 indefinitely. Sorry. It's been properly moved and seconded to uh, postpone indefinitely proposal 2023-21. Ms. Long, I, I don't need this read right into the record, do I? No, you don't, and it's just a voice vote as well. I think it's just a voice vote. Um, the, the, the action here is to postpone indefinitely. Uh, what I want to be clear about is I know that the um, facilities management division in this regard has already begun work here. Um, it, it, you know, there's so much on their plate. There, there is a lot going on right now that facilities management is managing and dealing with for us. Um, on this particular item, we've heard from neighbors, we've heard from others that um, I think that there just needs to be a, a bit more staff work done to, first of all, make sure that Pierce County, that no division of Pierce County actually truly does not need this. Um, therefore, we, do we really need to declare this surplus um, and, and, uh, and relinquish it? Um, I'm not convinced yet. I, I think there needs to be more staff work before we give up this public asset. And we continue to hear from neighbors that there are some disagreements uh, about some issues. And I think a little bit more staff work needs to happen in order to resolve those kinds of issues. So um, th 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 that is the reason to postpone, not to a date certain, because I think um, we need to hear from facilities management about when it's ready for council consideration. And there's no date that's identified yet for that. So that is the, the reason for the motion to postpone indefinitely. This is a voice vote. Are there any other remarks at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor of postponing indefinitely proposal number 2023-21, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The motion is adopted. It very well can come back to us in the future. We have proposal 2023-29 before us. Vice Chair Campbell for a motion. Thank you. I move proposal number 2023-29. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt proposal 2023-29. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title into the record? Proposal number 2023-29, an ordinance of the Pierce County Council amending chapter 4.48 of the Pierce County Code, counting funds, abolishing and renaming certain funds, and adding language for the creation, abolition, and oversight of the funds. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bokey. Thank you, Chair Mello, Paul Bokey, Council staff. Uh, this ordinance takes several actions around the establishment and abolition of county funds. First, it abolishes 15 county funds that have been determined by the Pierce County Finance Department to be no longer needed for county budgeting purposes, and that's in section one, page two of the ordinance, beginning on line 26 of exhibit A for funds being abolished. The Finance Department has also asked the two funds, the Planning and Land Services Building and Development Fund and the Combined Communications Network Fund be renamed, and both are special revenue funds, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Second, it creates two funds, the Opioid Settlement Fund, which is a special revenue fund, and the Government Services Capital Fund, which is a capital fund. Both funds have been previously added to the county budget. Both will now be codified. The, the funds to be renamed include the Planning and Land Services Building and Development Fund, which will now be renamed the Building and Development Fund, and the Conservation Futures Construction Fund, which is a capital fund, will now be renamed the Conservation Futures Capital Fund. The Combined Communications Network Fund will be renamed the Emergency Communications Network Fund. 
Fourth, new uh, sections are added to Chapter 4.48 to include definitions, creation of funds, abolishment of funds, and the fund manager representative. To date, Pierce County has not had a requirement that fund creation be codified. Uh, a review of Chapter 4.48 shows that the code is used to create funds on an inconsistent basis. Currently, 24 funds, including the general fund, are codified in Chapter 4.48. The effort to codify new funds has been better over the last few years. A review of other counties shows that uh, King County, for instance, has all its funds in a code in standard format, uh, much like the one that you're being asked to approve today. And so uh, this was given a due pass recommendation at the, uh, the August 7th Rules and Operations Committee meeting, and um, we do have one amendment. Thank you, Mr. Bokey. Are there questions for Mr. Bokey before we entertain Council Amendment Number 1? I'm not seeing any. I'm going to call on Vice Chair Campbell to move Council Amendment Number 1. I move Council Amendment Number 1. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt Council Amendment Number 1, Mr. Bokey. Thank you very much, Chair Mello. Uh, Council Amendment 1 does a number of things, and I would, I would put it in the kind of cleanup and consistency category. First, it sets an effective date, and the effective date of this ordinance will be January 1st, 2024. This was done in consultation with the finance department and they need time to clear the books on s several of these funds that aren't needed anymore. Um, it should be noted that when you approve the 2024-2025 budget, this, if you pass this today, it will be assumed that, that those accounts are, are gone going forward. There's also some consistency items um, We've been using words, de the word deposits. We're going to change that to revenues because we, it's clear and it also is called for in, in the, the base thing that you're approving of how, how what items need to be added in there to describe the fund. And the word is to use as revenues, not deposits. So we're going to go, we're changing that in several places where it says deposits. And then in other, areas we're going to use the word expenditures rather than the subheading purpose. There was also a request um, by the executive side that on several of the, the accounts uh, that it be the director or designee. So for the planning, planning and public works, so where it says planning and public works director under, under the uh, planning fund, it'll be planning and public works or designee and same with emergency management department and facilities management department and in the parks department for conservation futures. So those are the items. I can answer any questions if you'd like. Thank you. Are there questions about council amendment number one? I'm not seeing any. Uh, we'll take a voice vote on adoption of council amendment number one. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed aye. nay. The motion is adopted. There are no other amendments that I'm aware of. Nope. Uh, seeing no other amendments, seeing no hands for further, uh, do we, we do have a hand for a question or a comment at this time before we open this up for a public hearing. Councilmember Morrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Boki, you might be able to answer that, or Mr. Robinson. Do any of these um, funds have any, or accounts have any funds in them? That would be best answered by Mr. Robinson. Or Ms. DeMuth from and what the happens department. to those funds? Uh, good afternoon, Gary Robinson with the County Finance Department. Uh, for the funds that are being eliminated, most of them do not have any funds remaining. Uh, funds were expended or appropriated in prior biennia. Uh, one fund that we did have rep reference in the Rules and Operations Committee is the Election Stabilization Fund, uh, which I believe have balances of around a couple hundred thousand dollars. And what we'd be bringing forward for council consideration is the transfer of those funds in the budget for the next biennium. Uh, this ordinance does specify that any fund balances that are in an account, uh, transfer of any of the funds would be approved by the council through ordinance. 
uh, May say why I'm before you. Uh, Finance Department supports the amendment uh, that you adopted and also the underlying legislation. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, do you have any other comments on behalf of the department? Other comments, Chair. Thank you for being with us. I don't see any other hands at this time. We'll open this up for a public hearing. Anyone in chambers wishing to provide comment on Ordinance 2023-29? Anyone in chambers? Not seeing anyone in chambers wishing to provide comment on this. Mr. Weinsberry, anybody in the Zoom room? For any member of the public wishing to provide comment on proposal number 2023-29, uh, press the raise, raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. There are no hands at this time, Chair. So your hands will close the public hearing, bring it back to council. Are there final remarks by council members? We did review this in the Rules and Operations Committee. Um, good uh, technical changes um, so that our finance department and departments can um, continue to refine our budget for us. The vote is on adoption of proposal 2023-29. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Member Morrell. Aye. Council Member Campbell. Aye. Council Member Kruger. Aye. Council Member Denson. Aye. Council Member Herrera. Aye. Council Member Hitchin. Aye. And Council Member Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call vote is seven ayes and zero nays. On a vote of seven ayes and zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. That brings us to proposal number 2023-31. Council Member Denson for a motion to adopt proposal 2023-31. Thank you, Chair. I move proposal number 2023-31. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt ordinance 2023-31. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title into the record? Proposal number 2023-31, an ordinance of the Pierce County Council authorizing the approval of, approval of applications for open space. Last line, please. The last line is OS322, OS422, OS522, OS6. 22 and OS 722. Thank you. Mr. Cox, to brief the council. Yes, uh, Chair Mello, members of the council, Jeff Cox, council staff. Uh, the ordinance before you would grant council approval to seven open space public benefit rating system applications located in unincorporated Pierce County. And these are applications number OS 122, OS 222, OS 322, OS 422, OS 522, OS 622, and OS 722. The package includes seven applications, as I mentioned. Four of these are new applications. One is a re-rating, one's a transfer from farm and agriculture classification to current use, and one is a re-rating transfer from multiple classifications to current use classification. This will result in a revenue loss of $2,745 for the county. Properties are located variously near Parkland, Fredrickson, Roy, Long Branch, and Gig Harbor. I've included in the staff report a list of the property locations. The Planning Commission recommended due pass at the April 25th meeting of that uh, body. And uh, there's an equity note, noted, uh, equity note available on page 119 of your packet. And I'll note that Dean McClary, he's a planner with um, Planning and Public Works, is available online, I believe, to answer questions you might have. And I'd be happy, happy to take a shot at them as well. Thank you. Are there questions for Mr. Cox before we open this up for a public hearing? I'm not seeing any. Uh, excuse me. Council Member Morrell. Thank you. Mr. Cox, what, what is the main reason why you move uh, transfer over into open space classification? Uh, the main reason you would, well, you talk about this current use program, the open space classification is, actually, why don't I let, um, if you don't mind, let Dean take a shot at this. Good afternoon. It's nice to be here. I, I'm sorry, could we please have a repeat on the question? I would just, the question I ask is, what is the main reason why individuals move their properties to open space classification? So what you have in your, uh, in this particular ordinance is a couple of examples where a couple of things can happen. Uh, one is the uh, requirements to meet the RCWs for farm and agricultural land are pretty tight. Uh, if, if a con constituent who is in our open space program can no longer meet the criteria for farm and ag, they can do, uh, uh, make a request for a re-rate. So that, that's one thing that can happen. Um, 
The other thing can happen is if, if a property changes hands, there's a, the, a, a property that's in our current open space program, uh, go it sells, uh, is that uh, we have the opportunity in the county to uh, apply the new uh, benefit rating system to confirm uh, the, the uh, we call the current use uh, dollars that uh, or discount uh, that's in place. And it's because the public benefit rating system has changed over time. So that's where a re-rate uh, part can play a role. Uh, those are the two things I'm aware of at this point that could cause uh, a change in how we, the, the status of open spaces. Okay, and I would assume anyone who meets the criteria can apply for an open space classification? Yes, that's correct. And there's multiple uh, opportunities for uh, a applicant to have their request properly vetted. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions before we open this up for a public hearing? Mr. McCleary, thank you for making yourself available to answer our questions today. This is a public hearing. Anyone in chambers wishing to provide comment on ordinance 2023-31? Anyone in chambers to come to the podium? I'm not seeing anyone. Mr. Weinsberry, anybody online in the Zoom room? For any member of the public wishing to provide comment on proposal number 2023-31, press the raise hand icon in Zoom or start nine on your telephone keypad. <coughs> no hands at this time, Chair. Thank you. Seeing no hands, we'll close the public hearing. We'll bring it back to the council. Are there any final remarks by council members? Not seeing any. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on proposal 2023-31? Council member Campbell. Aye. <coughs> Kluber. Aye. Councilmember Denson. Aye. Councilmember Herrera. Excuse. Excused. Thank you. Councilmember Hitch Council Member Hitchin. Aye. Councilmember Morell. Aye. And Councilmember Mello. Aye. <coughs> On a vote of six ayes and zero nays. On a vote of six ayes and zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. That brings us to proposal R2023-122. Vice Chair Campbell for a motion. I move proposal number R2023-122. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2023-122. Madam Clerk, will you please read the title into the record? Proposal number R2023-122, a resolution of the Pierce County Council approving the Human Services Department and Behavioral Health Advisory Board's 2024 through 2025 funding recommendations for the Behavior Health and Therapeutic Courts Fund and liquor tax. Thank you. Ms. Merrick to brief the council. Thank you, Chair Mello, uh, committee me council members for the record, Lou Beth Merrick, council staff. Uh, proposal R2023-122 um, approves the Human Services Department and the Behavioral Health Advisory Board's funding recommendations for 20. 24, 2025 uh, for the Behavioral Health and Therapeutic Courts Fund and County Liquor Tax. Uh, this comes to you from the Health and Human Services Committee um, with a, without recommendation. Um, just to clarify that um, was forwarded without recommendation because there were several requests for information that came from the committee. Those requests have been fulfilled. You were briefed on them um, during study session during uh, today. Um, there were a couple additional items that were requested um, during today's study session that the department has provided. Um, so they provided the scores for the internal project reviews. Um, they also provided additional details about, I think it was Council Member Campbell's question regarding uh, why communities and schools in Lakewood was funded, but communities and schools in um, Peninsula wasn't funded. And then they provided additional detail about um, the work that they're doing around uh, solidifying behavioral health supports and housing. So to Council Member Morell's question about Ording Veterans Village. Um, there was a question also requested um, from finance about what authority the council has um, to amend or change these funding recommendations. So my understanding from Director Robinson is that he did request that information from the prosecutor's office, but there has not been um, no definitive response yet. So that's just a little bit of background based on the information um, that has been requested since the proposal was initially heard in Health and Human Services and where we are today. Um, just in terms of the RFP process in general, 
It's for two funding sources, so the Behavioral Health and Therapeutic Courts Fund, as well as county liquor tax. The department released the RFP in March. Um, they received over 60 proposals requesting over $63 million in funding. The proposal before you approves the department and the advisory board's recommendations, which start on page 219 of your packet. This is exhibit A to the resolution. So 28 programs are recommended for funding for a total of nearly $30 million for the 24-25 biennium. $29,476,250 of the awards come from the behavioral health tax and $522,000 of the awards come from the county liquor tax revenue. 19 of the programs that are recommended for funding were funded during the 22-23 biennium. There's no fiscal impact to the general fund. The equity note is available um, starting on page 233 of your packet. And with that, um, I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Merrick. Um, are there questions by council members? I, I will start by um, questions or comments by council members before we open this up for a public hearing. I just wanted to start by um, uh, first thanking the department for being responsive to our many questions. Committee members looked at this uh, very critically, asked very good questions, um, and, and uh, we had a good discussion today in study session. Uh, Mr. Robinson, I know, is fielding um, one of those questions that uh, was asked by Vice Chair Campbell uh, today. I'm very, the council very much expects an answer to that question. I will say from my chair, I don't anticipate making any amendments to this particular list. I think this is a well-vetted, thoughtful list. I, I anticipate uh, advancing, um, uh, approving, um, and authorizing the executive to enter into these contracts. So, you know, while I still want the answer to that question that Vice Chair Campbell asked, I don't have a need to make an amendment to the list. If another member does um, envision amending this list and needs, and therefore needs the answer to the question Vice Chair Campbell asks, then please say so and we can uh, work accordingly. I, I for one, don't anticipate uh, amending the, the list. Um, I, I wanted to make note, you know, one program that was asked about at the committee was about the United Way of Pierce County um, 211 program navigators, the Baber Health Navigators. Uh, this is uh, an investment that the county and the city of Tacoma has made together for some time to stand up this navigation program where people can call 211, someone who's in crisis, and be able to navigate a pretty complicated space. How, how do I find help for someone in need, whether it's a family member, or a friend, or myself? It's a very, very needed program. I, I appreciate the response we got from the department and the um, and and the advisory group who were making recommendations to us that they wanted to really prioritize direct service investments to people and not fund navigation programs like this. That's not direct service. That was basically the answer we got as to why the United Way of Pierce County 211 navigation did not score high enough and is not recommended for funding. I could appreciate that response, um, and I, for one, will be working with my colleagues to think about how we fund our our share of this navigation program with a different funding source, hopefully during our budget process. Again, that was the response we got from the department was, look for a different funding source that might be appropriate. We want to prioritize direct service with these dollars. So I can accept that. Um, answer and, and the answers to the many questions my colleagues asked that we got response from. Um, but I, so I wanted to say that on the record and, and appreciate the hard work and the good questions. I'm not seeing any other hands at this time. We'll open this up for a public hearing. Is there anyone in chambers wishing to provide public comment on resolution 2023-122? Anyone in chambers? Not seeing any, Mr. Winesbury. Anybody in the Zoom room? For any member of the public wishing to provide comment um, proposal number 2023-122. Press the raise hand icon in Zoom or start nine on your telephone keypad. I see no hands at this time, Chair. See no hands. We'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Final remarks or, uh, by council members. Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you to staff and all the work on this and uh, for getting the information uh, to us that you were able to get to us at 
there's still some data that I haven't had time to sit down and really process through, but stepping back, looking at the 10,000 foot level, I think some really good recommendations have been put forward. Um, I am really anxious to hear the results from the information we asked for from Director Robinson. Um, maybe not so much for this case, because I don't anticipate any amendments, uh, but the simple fact that, as I understood it, we wouldn't be able to cut even a little bit off of one to fund something else or even take any knowledge that we have of our districts or what our constituents want and ensure that that's being applied from a different level of contact that we have with the community that members of the committee may not have, that members of the staff may not have. And to have our, you know, those are valuable voices, the people who are handling the contracts every day, the people who we brought in as subject area experts. Well, we're subject area experts, some would say, in understanding our districts and our communities and what we need. And I want to ensure we're not blocked out of a process of our voice uh, being part of this. And uh, from what I'm understanding is, it's kind of an up or down vote. We either accept all or accept none, um, which is not a good way to be doing things. Um, that's my understanding of how it is. However, I accept all the ones that we have. Uh, so I, I don't have a need to hold it over today. I'm willing to let, uh, our, our, unless someone else really wants to, um, willing to let staff get to the good work of getting these programs set up on contract so that they can do the work that they need to do. Um, I do want to await the information that we get back and then have a follow-up discussion on that. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. I definitely see Director Robinson listening and nodding, so uh, confirmation that's in the works. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Hitchin. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I want to thank my colleague for taking the time to really dive into the work uh, that was presented by the Behavioral Health Advisory Board and um, acknowledge and thank the staff that supported that group. Um, when the legislation that created the Behavioral Health Advisory Board that, that picked who was going to be, whose voice do we need to have there, um, there was really some intentionality around whose voice we want there to bring the expertise um, and truly want to thank the, the voices that worked and the staff that supported them because I don't, I think we heard there were 27 questions and over 60 projects and if they were writing a paragraph as somebody who's graded 150 essays and had a time schedule, it's, it's a lot. And then the idea of kind of weighing the values of, um, weighing the values and the needs in the community and identifying geographic equity and looking at populations that are, you know, at higher risk. I mean, they really did a nice job of kind of figuring out where do we get the biggest bang for a buck. Um, and I just really appreciate the work that they did um, in, in this um, with the guidance and support of the um, human services staff. Um, so I know a couple of them have been hanging in case we needed them to phone a friend. So. Um, thank you, Taffy um, and Catherine and Director Moss. So just wanted to acknowledge and thank them for their work. And if I forgot someone, I'm sure that I did. Uh, I apologize, and you are also thanked. I will eventually figure everybody out. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Hitchin. Councilmember Morell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I do echo the compliments that uh, Councilmember Hitchin uh, just spoke to and I'd like to thank all those involved. Um, it's not an easy process. Um, as uh, Ms. Merrick said, there was $63 million worth of requests. We funded 30 million, approximately 30 million, 28 projects. And I think it, as the results, the data, the metrics, whatever you want to call it, start coming in, that I'm really hoping that we're starting to make some headway uh, with mental health in, in this uh, county. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, I want to thank the Behavioral Health Advisory Board for their job that they do. As uh, Council Member Hitchens said, uh, we strategically, logically, figured out how we would put that board together 
and uh, they have uh, done very well. So with that, the only thing that I would like to do is make a verbal amendment that we put a smiley face on this and send it out. So thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, um, Councilman Morell, and thank you, no one, for seconding that uh, for a minute. I thought about it. Um, uh, I'll close uh, debate also by, um, again, thanking members for their good work in, in reviewing this and asking really good questions. Um, the, the staff in our human services department uh, just worked tremendously hard to, um, to shepherd this forward. They started the process earlier in large part in response to the call from the community, our, our provider community, human service provider community and the council to get started much earlier in the process um, so that we can walk into the new biennium and the new year with contracts in place so folks can have certainty that they were gonna get paid for the work that they were doing on, on the public's behalf. Um, so the, you know, the department really moved things around a lot so that they could begin the competition process much earlier than they were used to. Um, the advisory board spent a tremendous amount of time and expertise vetting this for us and getting us a really great list of uh, investments to make here. Um, and I'm so grateful this county is making these really critical investments. So thank you to the staff. Thank you for rearranging the calendar again so that we can get contracts done earlier um, and, and have them in place uh, when the new year starts. That is um, a really critical refinement to our process. And you know, the, the, list, um, the list is really diverse. There's a lot of really great um, investments. The, some of the newer investments in this list that um, I'm, I'm extra interested in and, and excited about is, um, you know, in this recent request for proposals, we said uh, that the workforce is a major crisis here. Uh, the behavioral health workforce. We do not have nearly enough behavioral health professionals um, available and working in Pierce County. Uh, we, we, the, the department heard that need from the council and the community, added that as a priority to this request for proposals. And, and we got um, a couple of really great responses in this regard um, to really work on investing in this challenge of the behavioral health uh, workforce. So um, I'm really hopeful about those investments and, and what movement we can make uh, in the behavioral health workforce challenge and the, the millions of dollars we're, we're putting out the door for communities all across Pierce County uh, in schools and um, in, in permanent supportive housing sites and um, uh, communities all across the county to, to get um, these kinds of uh, really critical resources. Th these resources also fund our co-responder program, right? The, the mental health professionals that ride alongside our Pierce County Sheriff's deputies so that there can be a, a proper response um, when someone's in crisis uh, out in the field um, alongside a Pierce County Sheriff's deputies. There, there's a lot of good that happens with this group of investments. Um, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a really impressive list of investments. Thank you again to the department for helping lead this work and for everyone who's been involved in helping to shepherd it. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll on adoption of resolution 2023-122. Yes, Council Member Hoover. Aye. Council Member Denson. Excused. Thank you. Council Member Herrera, excused. Excused. Council Member Hinton. Aye. Council Member, Council Member Morell. Aye. Council Member Campbell. Aye. And Council Member Mello. Aye. The result of the roll call vote is five ayes and two excuses. On a vote of five ayes and zero nays with two excuse, the resolution is adopted. That is all of our business for today. We are at section 10 of our agenda community forum. This is an opportunity for members of the public to share comments with the council on any item that was not on our agenda today. Uh, you're invited to come to the podium, introduce yourself, and you have up to three minutes to make your remarks on any item that was not on our agenda. Is there anyone in the chambers wishing to participate in community forum? Anyone in the chambers? Not seeing any. Mr. Weinsbury, is there anybody in the Zoom room wishing to participate in community forum? For any member of the public wishing to provide a comment during community forum, 
press the raise hand icon in Zoom or star nine on your telephone keypad. And we have one person, wait, the hand went away. The hand went up and went down, sure. Well, Ter the, the hand's there. I uh, heard. Terry Hurd, you're up. Thank you, I'm Terry Hurd. I've listened often to the number of organizations that have resources and experience and advice available to the people of Pierce County. I'm going to compare it to my wife and I use calendars and these planners, and we put those in there. Is there a way for you to put out, hopefully on a uh, web base, a calendar that has these dates that recognize the worthy effort of these organizations and contact numbers so that people could look at a calendar, see the date that you have recognized as the appropriate date to recognize their good works and ability in helping Pierce County. Thank you, that's, that's it for today. Thank you, Terry. I see no further hands. Oh, please. Seeing no other hands, we'll close the portion of community forum and bring it back to the council. We are, uh, and I want to acknowledge our communications manager, um, as always, is uh, listening to our meeting, heard your thought, Mr. Hurd, and we will think about um, uh, what you shared there and what it might take to, to do that. Um, so thank you for that comment. We will definitely take it into advisement. We're at section 11, other business and announcements. Do any members have any business or announcements? Council Member Morell. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, my colleagues in having the ability to have a civil debate on issues that we may not agree about, but we don't attack each other. And so civility is very important nowadays. And I appreciate this council being the example of what governance and civility uh, really looks like when you're in disagreement, but yet you still have the opportunity to prove your point. But there again, you don't make it personal. So with that, I just appreciate the opportunity to be able to debate issues and to bring them to a vote. And, uh, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And, uh, you know, you gotta have a thick skin to be in politics. So uh, here we are. And uh, there again, I just appreciate all the members' respectfulness. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Morrell. Could not agree with you more. Councilmember Kruver. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for those comments. That's very true. I, I just wanted to add thank you for all who attended my in-district meeting last Tuesday night. It was a lot of fun and a little warm, but I just wanted to give thanks for everyone. I really appreciate the presence. So, thank you. Thank you for hosting us, Councilmember Kruver. Um, I, I gotta say, I'm not hurting from the rail, the rail cycle experience. It was fun. It, it wasn't a lot of work, actually. I was expecting a little bit more work, so I, di I didn't, it was fun, though. So thank you for not making me work so hard. <laughs> I was expecting more uphill or more cycling, or so, but it was a beautiful way to see the valley and see the broader Greenfield <coughs> area. It will be expanded in time. Awesome. So maybe it'll be more work in the future legs. Is there... Thank you. Um, my final remark um, is just, uh, again, our, our moment of silence today was um, in recognition of those uh, in, in Maui, specifically in the community of Lahaina, Maui. Um, many of you know I did grow up in Hawaii and uh, there's a lot of devastation, a lot of heartache in the state of Hawaii right now. Uh, many of us are wearing um, uh, Hawaii state uh, flag pins um, in solidarity for our uh, fellow Americans in the state of Hawaii. Um, we just continue to have heavy hearts in listening to the destructive the destruction that we're hearing about. Um, 
really expecting close to a thousand people that have uh, lost their lives as a result of that wildfire. It's just astonishing. And just again, the many lives, uh, livelihoods, businesses, and people's homes um, that were lost in that destruction. Um, I'm also seeing our own wildfire crisis here in Washington State, most recently in Spokane. It's just, it's a really tough time. Folks need to, we need to be really careful out there um, and really make sure we take care of our neighbors. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of people with a lot of hurt. So um, urge folks to find opportunities as appropriate to uh, reach out, help neighbors, even if they're in another state. Um, you know, there's a lot of connection uh, to, to the people of Hawaii with the people of uh, Washington. There's many of us with family and friends uh, who still live there, who have moved here. There's a strong connection between these two states. Um, and again, our own state with a lot of people um, with lives and, and property that, that have been lost. So urge folks to find ways to, to be of service and be of help if, um, if, if you're so fortunate to do so. Ms. Long, is there any other business for council today? Seeing no other business before the Pierce County Council, we are adjourned. <laughs>